Nothing lasts forever, and all things must pass. From the release of Iron Man, all the way through the Infinity Saga, Marvel was fun, vibrant, even exhilarating, and its fanbase was devoted with a spirit of irreverent preoccupation and camaraderie. As Marvel's Phase 4 winds down, an overbloated, directionless sprawl of content with little connective themes, heart, or ability to provide satisfactory conclusions, there's a different feeling about Marvel. Watching Marvel now is like purchasing a jumbo or family-sized pack of Oreos or Doritos and having made it three quarters through the pack and feeling bloated, flatulent, guilty, and moodily sleepy, you plow on indiscriminately and joylessly, simply because it's there or that it has now become a kind of adversarial context where the junk food will have won if you can't defeat it by consuming it down to the last fattening, greasy crumb. Watching that last episode of Moon Knight, or that final revelation in Loki, is like burrowing down with flavor-dusted salivary fingers to the bottom of the foil packet and dragging out the last shards of product, and then tossing the packet aside with equal contempt for both it and yourself, and sitting in a testy stupor as the packet gradually, crinkly re-expands. Watching Marvel now is like going trick-or-treating at Halloween, but being 14 or 15, a year or two too old, with a vaguely disconsolate, sullen feeling that you should have moved on, made more clinching, more stark, by school contemporaries answering their doors on your trick-or-treat route, in their jeans and hoodies, and eyeing your costume with an ironic disparagement and hint of a smirk. Watching Marvel now is like a girl in the midst of her college degree still listening to Taylor Swift. A drab sense of redundancy, of something once adored no longer bearing scrutiny or measuring up to a new phase of life. Of still humming along to songs more evocative of a time of life reading YA fiction, having braces and doing driving lessons, and hanging out at the mall, and thinking the lyrics profound and urgent and perceptive. When, in the more visceral, multifaceted reality of early adulthood, the music now seems quite facile, and you know you should delete it from your music library, but some emotionally undeveloped and fragile part of yourself has yet to fade. Watching Marvel now was like supporting a local sports team who have failed to make the playoffs, but there are still a couple of round-robin matches yet to play out. You sit in the stands among a smattering of isolated, sometimes dubious-looking other fans, and try but largely fail to quell a creeping sense of irrelevance, that the players, hollow at having failed to progress, and struggling to reconcile among themselves their individual and collective lapses and failures, are irresolutely going through the motions during a meaningless encounter with another team also relegated to irrelevance. After the glorious, dank, high-quality chronic of the Infinity Saga, the end of Phase 4 is like drifting around in a state of morbid self-consciousness from one ashtray to another, finding the grey-stubbed ends of spliffs, unrolling them and prizing out the tatty remainders of cannabis, and working them together into some sad, scarcely satisfying, acrid-tasting, scummy substitute worth a toke or two that brings on more of a headache and state of existential bleakness than a high. The uncertain progression from Avengers Endgame to the end of Phase 4 is like a girlfriend who once prided herself on going to the gym and toning her exquisite curves on the elliptical, who has now let herself go, lounges on the couch watching reality TV, and the now infrequent sex is best enjoyed with the lights off or eyes closed. And even these countermeasures against rack and ruin, this illusion is dispelled by the blubbery, waving slap of neglected flesh on neglected flesh. The innocent experimentation and rawness of pubescent horniness that is analogous to the Infinity Saga is met with a further analogy of desensitized masturbational routine far too late in adolescence and into early adulthood. That is the end of Phase 4. With Wakanda Forever and WandaVision being like a moment of seeing yourself dimly reflected in the screen of your laptop, your sullen face overlaid or superimposed over the financially expedient, unloving gyrations of the Pornhub performers in whichever video was half-heartedly offering some sense of satiation or release. In short, nothing lasts forever, and there comes a time when you have to realize it's time to move on. Sooner or later, the illusion starts to slip. It's harder and harder to suspend disbelief. The heroic character on screen starts to appear, more often than not, as just a Hollywood persona dressed in a colourful costume, and an even more gaudily, candy-coloured, swirling CGI landscape. And the magic of yesteryear begins to dissipate, and you feel self-conscious, not just at being a grown adult, having this stuff flashing and flickering on your screen, but at the sheer, dulling, ceaseless volume of it, often overlapping and blurring into one frenetic, exhausting, overstimulating, kaleidoscopic wash and swirl. Until finally, one day, you press stop. 
and you do something more mature, something that feels long overdue, something of benefit to yourself and to society at large, you subscribe to my channel, or even support me on Patreon. Change can be hard, but I believe in your ability to seek and find renewal, and to boost my metrics and profile. The only question is, do you believe in yourself as much as I believe in you?